Hello and welcome to Bay College's lecture videos for Math 085. This is section 2.6, part 1. We're going to work with dividing with fractions. Uh, but before we do that, we have to do a little bit of defining. And that's to define a reciprocal. It's a tool we're going to use to divide with fractions. And a reciprocal is uh, two fractions that are reciprocals if their product is 1. Now, having this in English terms, sometimes it's not that clear. But a reciprocal is if we have a fraction, as an example, some number over another, a numerator over a denominator, its reciprocal is essentially just flipping them, making your numerator the denominator and your denominator the numerator. So we have b over a instead of a over b. Now, what this says here is that the product is 1. Well, the product means to multiply. If I multiply these two together, I will get 1. Well, let's see why. If I look at this and say, well, an a on top will reduce an a on the bottom, as we had seen before, they reduce to 1. A b on the bottom will reduce a b on the top to 1. So now I have 1 times 1 over 1 times 1. Well, 1 over 1 is the same thing as 1. So we see that that holds true. So a reciprocal is this. We just, take, we just flip our numerator and denominator. Let's look at some examples where we're asked to find the reciprocal. Well, if we're asked to find the reciprocal of 5 thirds, by definition, its reciprocal is we switch numerator and denominator. So my denominator becomes my numerator. And my numerator becomes my denominator. So I end up with 3 fifths. Well, <clears throat> even if we have a variable, we can treat it the same way. I still have a numerator and a denominator. To find its reciprocal, I move my denominator to the numerator and my numerator to the denominator. This is the reciprocal of that. What if I just have a constant? Well, any constant I can think of as being divided by 1, because 1 never changes the number whether I'm multiplying or dividing. So 9 over 1 is the same as 9. Its reciprocal is, well, I put the denominator in my numerator and the numerator in the denominator. I essentially just flip it. So 9 and 1 9th are reciprocals. What about 0? Now, we've seen 0 has some particular properties. Um, whether they be identity or otherwise. If 0, we can always write it as over 1. It doesn't change its value. Any 0 divided by any number is still 0, or not equals. It's reciprocal. If I change my denominator to a numerator and my numerator to a denominator, would this be the reciprocal? Well, what's 1 divided by 0? Well, any number divided by 0 is undefined. We can never divide by 0. So 0 actually does not have a reciprocal. Its reciprocal would be undefined. So 0 has no reciprocal. What about 1? One? 1's kind of interesting, because I can think of 1 as being over 1. And if I take that reciprocal, move this to the top and this to the bottom, I still have 1 over 1. 1 is actually its own reciprocal. Because when we talked about the product of re reciprocals equals to 1, well, 1 times 1 will still be equal to 1. So 1 is its own reciprocal. So why don't you try to find the reciprocal for this one, x over y, on your own at this time. We're going to move on to actually dividing fractions. Now that we have the concept of reciprocals, we can see how we can apply those. When we're dividing fractions, in order to divide them, we actually change it to multiplication. So I can rewrite this as multiplication, because multiplication and division are reciprocal operations. They're equal and opposite. So I can rewrite this. To divide a fraction, you always multiply by its reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of the divisor. This is my divisor. So to find its reciprocal, I move this to my numerator and this to my denominator. And now I can just multiply it a times d over b times c. And if I knew what these numbers were, maybe I could do some reducing. 
Now here, I have 2 fifteenths divided by 8. So instead of our variables, we have some actual numbers. Well, I can always think of a whole number as being over 1. And now 2 fifteenths divided by 8 over 1, I can change this to multiplication. 2 fifteenths times 1 over 8 is the reciprocal of 8. And I could do some reducing. I know that 2 is a common factor of 8. So I factor out that 2. And now I have 1 times 1 is 1. And 15 times 4 is going to give me 60. 1 60th is this division. Let's look at another example. Now, sometimes when we have fractions, maybe it's best to reduce them first. Because I see 3 6, and I say, hey, 3 6 can reduce to 1 half. 21 over 36, maybe you see a common factor. Maybe you don't. But I see that 21 and 36 are both divisible by 3. So just to reduce it, 3 goes into 27, or 21 7 times. 3 goes into 36 12 times. Now I have smaller numbers, and smaller numbers are easy to work with. So I'm going to change this to multiplication. 1 half divided by becomes multiplication by the reciprocal of our divisor, 12 sevenths. And now we have 1 half times 12 sevenths. And I say, hey, 2 and 12 have a common factor, so I can reduce. And I have 1 over 1, which is just 1, times this fraction, 6 over 7. So my solution is 6 over 7. All right, what if it has a variable? Well, a variable we can treat just like a number, but we treat it like a prime number. We have 9 times some, some value. Well, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. 2 over 9 becomes 9 over 2. And we would try to do some reducing. Well, if I look at this, 9 doesn't have any common factors with 2 or 20. So there's nothing to reduce. So I can multiply straight across. 9z times 9 is 81z. And 20 times 2 is 40. And just check one more time. No, I don't see any common factors. That is simplified as far as we can go. What if we have multiple variables, or a single variable, but in different locations? Well, we can treat it the same. Negative 3 over y squared times the reciprocal y over 9. And now we can reduce. Well, before we reduce, let's look at the, well, we're going to reduce. This number is negative. When we dealt with integers, we looked at multiplication of integers. If there's an even number, it's going to be positive. If there's an odd number, it's going to be negative. I can assess the sign right now. There's only one negative in this multiplication, which means my solution will be negative. And now I don't have to worry about that sign at all. I can just go ahead and reduce. 3 and 9 have a common factor, so it reduces to 1 over 3. y squared and y, well, this just means y times y. And that's a y. One of the y's, any number over itself will cancel. So one y on top will cancel one y on the bottom. The only thing left is this y. So I have 1 times 1 over y times 3. 1 on top, 3 times y on the bottom. So I have a negative 1 over 3y. Now, if we look at this one, we see, well, this one doesn't have a denominator. And if it doesn't, we can give it 1. We divide it by 1. And now we can change this to multiplication. 15c cubed over 1 times the reciprocal. I move the denominator to the numerator and the numerator, which is 3c squared, to the denominator. And now I can reduce. Now, I see 15 and 3 have a common factor. 3 would actually go into 15 five times. And I have three c's on top and two c's on the bottom. Well, each c will cancel one c. So two of these will cancel both of those. Two c's, two c's. So what's left? I have 5 times c times 5. Well, we can multiply those numbers together. 5 times 5 is 25c. 
And on the bottom, I have 1, this 3 reduced to 1, and the c squared reduced to 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. So we could write this as being over 1, but being over 1 just simplifies to 25c. All right, one more for you to try. We have 4ab divided by c divided by 2ab squared divided by c squared. So we have 4ab over c divided by 2ab squared over c squared. Try this one for yourself. Cancel what you can and simplify. This has been 2.6 part 1. Thank you for watching.